to the Vision Institute, a unique internationally recognised research centre situated in the heart of Paris, where academic researchers and medical doctors collaborate with startups to discover, develop and implement new technologies with the aim of preventing, reducing and even curing diseases that affect visual function. Today we will introduce the Wavefront Engineering Microscopy Group, which is part of the Photonics Department, led by Research Director Dr. Valentina Emiliani. Hi Valentina. Hi Mimi. Would you mind introducing us to the lab? Yeah, sure. Welcome to the lab. So, we are the Wavefront Engineering Microscopy Group. Uh, we are an interdisciplinary team composed by physicists, engineers, but also neurophysiologists. The interest of the lab is to um, develop new optical methods for the opt all optical manipulation of brain circuits. And since we moved to the Vision Institute, we are now focusing on using those approach for the investigation of neural circuits implicated in the vision. So during the visit, you will see a lot of microscope, but also many experiments where we use this approach for uh, manipulating neural circuits using optogenetics and different activity reporters. So enjoy the visit. Let's meet some members of the lab who will explain what we do. Here in the Millionist group, we are studying the fundamental mechanistic of the brain. For that, we need to be able to observe it and to manipulate it. The brain is composed of a set of interconnected cells, also known as neurons. Those neurons receive inputs from other regions of the brain, from other neurons. If the inputs arrive at concomitant events with the proper strength, they can activate a neuron that will generate an action potential to transmit the information to the next neuron. What we do in the lab is we try to observe this neuronal activity. For that, we use something called calcium imaging. Calcium imaging is based on the fact that once activated, a neuron will have an influx of calcium. Once it inactivates, then they will, they will have an outcome of uh, an outflux of calcium. The so-called calcium transient can be monitored thanks to genetically engineered protein such as GCAMP, which in its native form is non-visible but while presented with calcium, becomes fluorescent. So here are the molecular tools to observe neuronal activity. But how do we measure fluorescent signal in the brain? Thank you very much for the question. So today, the most used method to image neuronal activity in the brain is by using two photomicroscopy. Now, in two photon microscopy, you have two photons from the same laser pulse that are absorbed simultaneously by a fluorophore that then re emits a fluorescent photon. Now, there's at least two benefits if you want to do a two photon microscopy to study the brain. The first one is that it allows us to focus deeper light into the brain, which is a scattering tissue. Now, the second benefit is that by confining the interaction between light and the sample to a very small spatial regions, we're actually able to see very clearly single cells uh, with very little background if you do two photon microscopy. Now, there's also a downside of doing two photon microscopy, which is the fact that you need very expensive and powerful lasers uh, and very complex optical systems if you want to do it. But that's okay because there's us, the optics people, who can take care of it. Now, if you're able to do uh, your two photon microscope uh, right, uh, then you're also able to record these beautiful videos of neuronal activity in the brain, uh, for example, in this case, in the visual cortex, from which you could be able to tell the links between visual perception and neuronal activity in the brain. Now, to go a step further, we not only want to image neuronal activity, but we also want to manipulate it somehow. Now, the question is, how do we do that? To address these questions, we have to be able to manipulate the activity of individual neurons inside the brain. Optogenetics provides us opportunities to activate or inactivate neurons by using light. For example, we could activate neurons expressing light-gated ion channels or opsins, which conduct K-ion influx. 
One photon wide field illumination allows us to activate neurons simultaneously under the illumination volume, but it does not provide single cell resolution. We need optical methods that allow us to pattern the light matching single neurons. Then how can we do that? I think I'm going to ask my colleague Emiliano who is in explain optics. So you can redirect light wherever you want by using some holographic based methods. Basically, you need to modulate the phase of the incoming beam. And for doing that, you use some device which are called a spatial light modulator, which are pixelated liquid crystal display, in which you can control the voltage on each pixel, such that you can reorient the liquid crystals inside. And you, so you can produce a certain modulation. In particular, you have the possibility to produce a point by point modulation of the phase of your incoming beam. And when you do that, and you couple that with two photon excitation and temporal focusing, fraxial confinement of extended patterns, well, in the end, you have a system in which you can redirect the light with near single cell resolution on the neurons of your circuit. Welcome to one of our experimental rooms. So typically in our lab, microscopes are completely homemade and built from scratch. And this indeed is a, is a good example. So what we have on the table is first of all, two lasers. One laser is combined with some Galvo mirrors to perform two photon imaging. And the second laser is a fixed wavelength fiber laser to do photostimulation. So the photostimulation path is quite complicated. It goes through several optical elements. There are some attenuators and polarizers, several lenses to adjust the beam size. Now we're gonna to get to, to a diffraction grading in order to achieve temporal focusing. But then after, after that, we are gonna to get to the main elements of the system that you can see over there, that is the spatial light modulator. It's essentially a liquid crystal based screen that reflects the beam and modulates its phase. And this allows us to affect its propagation and then we will allow to reshape the illumination on the sample plane and so target specific cells. So indeed these two laser beams will be then recombined just before getting to the microscope objective and then the experiment can begin. To investigate circuits of neurons in the brain, we use in vivo and in vitro preparations. We can convert optical signals into electrical signals by expressing light-sensitive molecules, known as opsins, in neurons. Using electrophysiology, it is possible to characterize and monitor the response of neurons expressing opsins under two-photon holographic photostimulation. We can manipulate neuronal activity by photostimulating neurons and evoking action potentials, which are the electrical signals neurons use to communicate information. Photoactivation can be performed with high spatial and temporal precision thanks to the combination of two-photon excitation and the ever-expanding optogenetic toolbox. Using computer-generated holography, we can activate a specific set of neurons by generating sequences of holographic patterns. With two-photon optogenetics, we can control the activity of single neurons or of ensembles. Using genetically encoded calcium indicators, we can also observe neuronal activity evoked in this instance in the visual cortex in response to specific visual stimuli. Two-photon photoactivation of neurons with a precise spatio-temporal pattern and simultaneous monitoring of neuronal activity is an approach known as circuit optogenetics. <laughs>